Um, I will put Friday night's game, at least from the Padre standpoint, I'll put it on one person. I'll put, I'll put literally the whole thing on one guy. Um, if he plays, he performs, he hits, Padres have a real chance to win. He doesn't, forget it, man. It's over, as far as I'm concerned. And that's Manny Machado. We've been talking now for the last couple of years, and in particular this year, whose team is it? Whose team is it? It's Manny's team. But when it's your team, in the biggest moments, you got to perform. And I just can't really remember very much other than a home run, I want to say, in game one or was it game two? I, whatever. I mean, there just hasn't been very much. And a lot of strikeouts and exactly the same way. They keep striking him out the same way with these big-ass curveballs that fall off like six inches off the plate, and he's flailing away. And it's like, I, I, I'm not in the batter's box, okay? And I don't know what he sees. Like, maybe he thinks this pitch is coming right for us, right for my the heart of the plate, and I'm going to swing because it looks like a great pitch. I don't know. I mean, that that's him. But it just, every strikeout looks almost the exact same. And so... To me, this is your team, Manny Machado. If if it's your team and you're the leader, you got to perform. Fernando Tatis has exceed, ex exceeded expectations. After Manny Machado, I'd go jerks and Profar. Dude, you've had an amazing, incredible year, offensively and defensively. But I can't remember the last time that Profar has come up with a meaningful hit. And maybe you guys can. I just can't. You got to have Manny Machado perform. You got to have jerks and Profar because you're getting... Cronenworth all of a sudden breaking out. You're getting a David Peralta. I mean, that that is from out of nowhere. Uh, Jackson Merrill would be my third guy, even though you know he's had a pretty solid series, I would say, especially for a 21 year old kid. But I don't know how you guys feel about it. Manny doesn't perform. I I, I think the Padres will be toast. I completely disagree with that. I okay, couldn't disagree with good, that more. Good, good. You got to talk me off the ledge, Browner. Tatis has been a monster. True. A absolute monster. If you can, if you can get something out of a rise of all the people you went down the list, you absolutely forgot him. You're only expecting him to hit singles. He's done next to nothing in the lineup. He had, I think he had a hit toward the end of the game last night. Jake Cronenworth had a couple of hits toward the end of the night as well. So I don't, they don't need him to be this uh, uh, Herculean deliverer. They just need down the lineup guys to continue to produce. So I'm not looking at it as, a, oh, if Manny doesn't get hits, then they don't win. Because Tatis has been destroying it, and they've been winning. So the team is built on more than just Manny coming through in the fourth spot. I would be more concerned if we're being direct with Profar. Like, I think Jackson Merrill has been solid this, this postseason, and this series in particular. I think we've gotten next to nothing out of Profar other than he's been great defensively. But for, at the plate, not much at all. Not much at all to talk about. So I, that's the only guy I would be worried about. Everybody else, uh, no, I'm not worried at all. One bad guy. I, I, I'm not worried about anybody. I just think the key to the Padres' success is getting guys on base early. And a lot mm -hmm. of that is Luis Arise, and he's just been invisible. Yep. He was invisible in L.A. when they when they played to end the regular season. I think he went hitless in all three of those games. Uh, he does have hits this series, but none meaningful, none at a certain time. Um, so I think that you have to get – the way the Padres play is so many different ways. Like, they can power or they can small ball. And, you know, yesterday I think they did have a certain point, runners on first and second, no outs, and Kyle yep. Higashioka up. Yeah. And you know, he's been hitting home runs, but at the same time, it's like you got to start something somewhere. Yeah, so you can't be up. afraid. You can't be afraid to, to go back to small ball. Um, you know, they only won two days ago because they of the Dodgers fielding errors. So you got to take advantage when you can, however mm -hmm. you can. You can't always rely on home run. Um, so I, I think a lot of it is gonna it's the intricacies of the game that maybe go unnoticed that add up. You know, they add up in a series like this. So it's not just Hey, man, he's got a hit or like he does, but so does whoever's up at the plate when, when they got runners on, you know, it's like, so if it's Peralta and there's, you know, two on got to come through if gotta whoever, deliver. like if, if it's Luisa rice, cause the bottom of the lineup is producing and Luisa rice is up, you expect him to slap a single and get a runner in. You don't expect him to be uppercutting swings 
aiming for the fences, big dog. Come on. So no I, there, there's the way the Dodgers can hit and the way I expect them to hit tomorrow, the Padres have to match it. 